Cool here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be going through a crochet tutorial to make your very own crochet granny square market bag. So for the past few years, my crochet projects have been almost exclusively apparel related. So making a crochet bag is far from what I've been doing in the past, but I've really loved these bags for the longest time. I've been seeing them all over my Instagram popular page. They're just a really fun way to add a lot of different yarn colors to your projects. And also I think they're super cute to use as like a grocery bag, or going to the beach and you need a beach bag. I think that they have a lot of versatility to them and I know that this bag is definitely gonna be something I'm gonna use with every single thing that I'm doing. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know in order to make your own crochet granny square bag, including what materials you'll need, what abbreviations and stitches you'll need to know, how to actually make the bag, and of course how to assemble, and make sure that your bag is measuring up to be the correct size. Before we get started, I would just like to say, if you are new here, or even if you're not new, and you wanna see some more exciting crochet tutorials, I am going to be posting a new video every single week, and if you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see coming up in the future, please go ahead and comment them down below. And while you're down there, if you could hit subscribe and turn on notifications, maybe throw this video a like, a comment, whatever you're feeling, I really appreciate it. It really does help support me and my channel, and it also lets me know that you're enjoying the crochet tutorials that I'm putting out for you guys. So if you could do that, it would really mean a lot to me. Thank you guys so much. So yeah, why don't we go ahead and jump right in to the tutorial. For the materials, you are going to need about 200 yards of the two secondary colors in the bag, and then you're going to need 500 yards of the main color. And we are working today with a category four weight cotton yarn, 100% cotton. And I'm also using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and a tapestry needle to sew. In the description below, I'm going to link for you guys the exact yarn that I used, as well as the crochet hook I used, tapestry needle, and optional stitch markers that I use for my crochet projects. In the description, you'll also find the stitches that you'll need to know for this pattern, as well as the link to the written pattern, which is available on my website, thecrocheting.com. As far as measurements go, each square should be about four and a half to five inches on all sides. If you find that your square is weirdly very short or very tall, you might wanna adjust your hook size a little bit or the tension on your yarn, just to make sure that you're getting a square that's about the same size as mine. Now that we've got all our materials and we know our stitches and what size we're looking for, we can go ahead and get started making the actual bag. So the first part of the granny square is gonna be using the blue yarn and I've just fastened onto my hook here. I'm gonna start with a chain three And then I'm going to begin double crocheting into the third chain for my hook. I'm going to make here a total of three double crochets. So that's yarn over into the third chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, and pull through the last two loops. So I'm going to then chain two. And then three more times, I'm going to repeat that same process of double crocheting three times and then chaining two. Double crochet three times. And that first chain two, we're not gonna count as a double crochet. So we're just going to ignore that when we're slip stitching in. And one more double crochet. So now we have a total of four groups of three double crochets. I'm gonna do the final chain two, pull tightly that initial chain and then I'm going to slip stitch into the very first double crochet to close the round and then I can fasten off 
whenever. And so we're starting here with three double crochets in a total of four groups and then four chain two spaces. All right, so now I'm gonna take the white yarn and I'm just going to slip stitch into one of the chain two spaces and I'm gonna chain two. And this is actually gonna count now as a double crochet, this first chain two here. And then I'm going to double crochet two more times for a total of three double crochets, chain two. And then still in the chain two space, I'm going to double crochet another three more times. Okay, so now in that chain two space, we have a total of six double crochets separated each by a chain two. So it goes three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all in that one chain two space. And now I'm just going to chain two again, and I'm gonna repeat this all the way around. So I'm gonna make three double crochets, and then chain two, and then make another three double crochets in each chain two space around. And then to get to the next chain two space, I'm gonna chain two again. And I'm going to end the round by making a chain two and then slip stitching into my first double crochet. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up and then we'll get started on the third round of the granny square. So moving on to the row with the brown yarn, I'm gonna slip stitch again into one of the chain two spaces from last round. And begin, that's going to count as a double crochet, that chain two that I just made. And then I'm going to begin the same way last round again with three double crochets, a chain two, and then three more double crochets. And then the only difference now is now we're working into a chain two space over here. So we're gonna chain two and we're just gonna make three double crochets directly into that chain two space from the previous round. Chain two again, and now we're gonna repeat this entire process around the entire square edge. So that'll be again, Three double crochets, double more yarn, three double crochets, and then a chain two, and then three more double crochets, all in this chain two space, followed by another chain two to get you to the next part of the square, and then three double crochets in that chain two space right here. Okay, so we've just made our three, chain two, three, chain two again, and then double crochet three times into the next chain two space. So repeat this all the way around, and then end by chaining two and slip stitching into this first double crochet stitch here. So now we're gonna go back in with the blue yarn and we're just going to slip stitch into a corner chain two space, chain two, which will count as our first double crochet. And then we're actually going to double crochet for a total of six double crochets in this chain two space here. So this is four, five double crochets, and then six. So all six double crochets right in the chain two space on the corner. Then we're just going to double crochet in these three stitches across here. Just like that. And then two double crochets in this chain two space here. So if you could see what's happening here, we're just gonna be essentially double crocheting around the entire border. And to do that, we're going to be placing 
one double crochet in each of these side double crochet stitches here and then when you arrive at an edge chain two space you're going to just be making two double crochets into that space but then when you arrive at a corner chain two space you're going to be doing this six double crochets into the corner and you're going to just repeat that all the way around so as you can see here we're coming up to these three double crochets from last round and we're going to be just double crocheting into each oops there we go just double crocheting into each one and now that we've arrived at the corner here we can go ahead and make those six double crochets so I'm going to just continue this all the way around and then just one more step before we're done with the square. Okay, so I've arrived back at my first double crochet and I can go ahead and slip stitch into it. Now, instead of fastening off right away, what we're first gonna do is chain one and that will count as our first single crochet. And then you just wanna go ahead and work one single crochet in each stitch around. And then again, when you arrive back at your first single crochet, you can slip stitch into it to close around and then just leave a very long tail for sewing and fasten off. So you're gonna start out by making the bags frame. And what this looks like right now is just kind of like an X here, which is made up of five of the squares just sewn together. Uh, this is the exact same on both sides. So you'll have a total of 10 squares here to make up the X, just as you see here. And then the difference being these two pieces up top, which are connecting both of the X's. So this is in total right here to make the frame 14 squares. So you have 10 for both X's and then two up here. You can see this is gonna be the top of the bag and you can see these two, two squares are bent and folded inwards so that one side is connected here and one side is connected here uh, to both of the other axes and just folded vertically with the corners facing inward. And then if you look here at the bottom of the bag, you'll see the same thing, two squares that are folded um, in half to connect both of the axes, but these corners are actually facing up. So this is how you want your back to be set up at first. So once you've made at least 14 of the squares, you can go ahead and begin sewing these together with your tapestry needle uh, in order to make this X shape. And then this is gonna be the frame and then we'll move on to uh, filling out the bag. Okay, so I've just gone and sewn one of the gray squares down here at the bottom of the uh, sort of X that we had made. And so now the next step you want to do is you want to take two more squares and fold them in half so that the corners are facing inwards. And then you want to sew them along both of these edges. So one side will be connected to the front of your cross and then one side in the back here. So I'll come back to you when I've done that. All right, so I've just sewn in these other two squares. And so by now we should have actually been using a total of 17 squares just to keep track of that. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, if you did sew them correctly to those two other sides of each of these squares, these kind of just dangle off on the side here. You don't really know what is going on there. So I'm gonna show you what to do with these two ends here at the bottom. As you can see on this other side, I've really just kind of gone and tucked that in there. And so that kind of just will sit in the middle here uh, inside the bag and, and give it a little bit of structure too if you ever wanna stabilize the bag standing up if you've got some stuff in it, that will help with that. And um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, if you tuck this other side in, it, it's just really kind of shoving it in there until, you know, you get the proper edge size, like this nice corner here. And then if you want to go and turn it inside out, you'll see them inside here. 
and this is what it'll look like on the inside of the bag. You can go ahead and just sew in here together to, to line up the two edges here, just so that there's no chance it's gonna come out and you're gonna have a giant hole in your bag. And once you've gone and sewn in both of those sides, you can also just quickly tuck it up in here with these you know, loose strands. You can just kind of give it one final sew just to make sure that everything is nice and secure. And so let's go ahead and get that done. All right, so we've finished with the entire body of the bag and now we're just gonna go ahead and start the strap. So the way that I'm gonna start is taking the white yarn, I apologize, it's really sunny right now. I'm gonna take the white yarn and kind of flatten out the bag so that there's two very apparent corners at the top here. I'm gonna start on this side and I'm just gonna look, here's probably where the center would be. I'm just gonna look probably, uh, let's say three away from the center. And I'm gonna slip stitch into that stitch here. And then I'm gonna begin with a chain and depending on how long you want your strap to be, you can make this chain however long you want, just as long as it is a multiple of three. And so you can actually test this out too by slip stitching the chain into the opposite side, uh, corresponding side of the bag over here, which I'm gonna do pretty soon. And then if you put it around your shoulder and you're comfortable with the length, then you can go ahead and move on. If you think you want a longer chain, you can kind of continue to add until you have the chain length that you want, just as long as it's a multiple of three. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make my chain and then show you how to do the rest of this part. Okay, so I settled on 120 chains, which is divisible by three, so we're good to go there. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and find the same stitch on this side of the bag and slip stitch into it here. So now from here, we're going to be doing um, a sort of multiple of three pattern here, kind of like how these squares have been formed. So starting with skipping away from two stitches, we're going to just double crochet, double crochet three into the third stitch from our hook here. And now we're gonna continue. So skip over two and double crochet three in that third stitch from your hook. One more time, so we're counting two and then into this third stitch here, right here we will double crochet three. And so we're gonna repeat this all the way around. And when you get to the chain, so let me just show you really quickly. When you come around here all the way around and you get to this chain, you're just going to continue that same pattern, but across the entire chain. So when you skip two, you'll start on the chain and you'll count this as one of your double crochets and then once you reach this side, you'll come down here and then you'll start working on this back side. So that way you'll end up right over here on the other side of your chain with every single stitch covered with the same process of three double crochets in the third stitch from your hook. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cr uh, crochet around the entire border here following the same pattern and then I'll come back when we're starting with the second row. All right, so as you can see, I've made it back around to the other side of the strap where I started, and I'm just going to find the part right underneath this second double crochet three clip here and just slip stitch underneath, just like that. Perfect, and then I can fasten off. Okay, so now we're going to switch to the brown yarn 
And we're basically going to repeat this entire process again. So I have my brown yarn over here somewhere. And I've got my brown yarn here, and I'm just going to slip stitch in between two of the double crochet three groups. It really doesn't matter where, I'm just choosing to start in a similar spot to where I just fastened off. And I'm gonna chain two, which will count as my first double crochet. And I'm just going to start double crochet three around, so there's one group of three. I don't know why I just chained. My bad. I'm just gonna go directly into the next space in between the next two double crochet group three groups and make another three double crochets. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna do this all the way around in between the two groups, making three double crochets. And so this is going to cover the entire border of the bag as well as the entire strap. And you're only gonna do the one side of the strap, so I'm not gonna come underneath these double crochet three groups. I'm only gonna be working where the double crochet three groups have been made on the top here. So just one side of the strap is getting the, the brown yarn row round is done and I did forget to mention earlier there is a point where you're going to have to fasten on and fasten off in order to complete the other side of the bag because obviously you cannot loop around this uh, strap right here so you will have to fasten off fasten back on and in order to continue this pattern of three double crochets so we're getting into the final round of the bag which is going to be made with the blue yarn making a slip knot there. And then I'm just gonna fasten into any stitch on the bag. I just picked a one at random. I'm gonna chain one, which will count as my first single crochet. And I'm just going to single crochet around the entire last round. So again, you'll have to fasten off when you get to uh, this part of the strap that we're obviously not going to be covering but then that's really all there is to it. And once you arrive back at your first stitch, you can slip stitch into it in order to close around and then weave in all of your ends. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you're now enjoying your very own crochet granny square market bag. If you did make your own bag, I would love to see a photo of it. Please go ahead and tag me on Instagram at crocheting or find me on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. I'm on all those social channels, so go ahead and check me out. I put all the links in the description for you. So please do that and tag me. I would love, love, love to see your work. Also, if you did enjoy this video and you want to see more from me or you just want to go ahead and support my YouTube channel, please hit subscribe down below, turn on notifications, like, comment, tag your friends, whatever it might be. It means a lot to me to see all of you guys supporting my videos. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.